may be better spent investigating the Muslim terror threat here at home. Some very concerning developments. An American may be behind a social media blitz by ISIS. A computer whiz from Boston is reportedly accused of helping the terror network spread its propaganda. And then there's this American, Don Morgan from North Carolina. The former law enforcement officer and bodybuilder actually just admitted on camera to NBC News that he tried to join ISIS. Someone has to defend Islam and somebody has to defend innocent Muslims. I purchased a ticket with the intent of entering to Syria, uh, either joining up with medical and food aid convoys or directly with Islamic State. A push came from being mistreated by people around me who didn't share the views I had. I think there's a strong possibility that they'll uh, charge me with uh, supporting terrorist organizations and uh, uh, participating in terrorist activities. Wow. And there are dozens of Americans overseas right now fighting with ISIS. Here's our defense secretary. We are aware of over 100 U.S. citizens uh, who have U.S. passports mm -hmm. who are fighting in the Middle East uh, uh, with ISIL forces. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be more. Uh, we don't know. All right, so we learned this week, Greg, um, the DOJ civil rights investigation, the FBI focused on nude photos of celebrities. Does it seem a little misguided with this ISIS terror threat? And when you see footage of an American saying that he wants to join the fight with ISIS against America on an American news network, yeah. it's a little bit disconcerting. Yeah, uh, but yeah, to talk about Don Morgan, it, it is, uh, it's a, it's a, there's a clear trend here. All of these recruits are bona fide losers. Uh, radical Islam is a loser magnet, which is why I have to ask, why do we stop them from going? I will pay, I will pay the ticket for any radicalized Muslim in America to go to Syria. And everybody should go. We could call that uh, uh, the Martyr Exchange Program. Uh, they should, we could all sponsor a terrorist and send them to their very own paradise. But you'll notice these guys. These guys are inferior beings because they feel that uh, life has been rough on me, so I must go kill people. Generally, if you're a holy man, if you're a holy person, you're okay with non-believers. You're all right with that because you're confident. These are not confident people. They're sad, pathetic little beings that deserve to die. Let's accelerate their death. Almost like a cash for clunkers, but like a cash for camels or something. Yeah, this one will work. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, it would. It sounds very good. Uh, Dana, the defense secretary, there's hundreds of Americans that could join this fight. Very troubling and very different from the message of the White House, but the message of the White House has been all over the map. And also, this is just the last three weeks that this has actually been on America's, um, in the, on the front pages. For about two years, there have been almost 12,000 foreign fighters that have Western passports. That's not necessarily American, but from Western civilized nations um, that have been fighting and training in, in Syria. It just, it, it, is, uh, it is obvious that some of them have returned. Now, the path to radicalization is not necessarily straight. So maybe when, when they come back, they're not going to actually blow up anybody. But I think that being vigilant is, is the most important thing. To Greg's idea, what if, because, because it, one of the things that uh, these people like Dan Morgan are doing, are they are looking for deals online, travel deals. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that we should figure out a way to like really sweeten the pot, mm -hmm. make, those tr make those tickets really attractive, and then snag them and watch them, watch them walk away and then leave them stateless so that they can't get back. I think that there are some certain things that we could do. We, have to, we need to be as creative as they are. Last thing I would say is on somebody like this, if he knew, if he was in Syria and he were to find out about an American who was being held hostage who was about to be beheaded, mm -hmm. I think he should be charged with treason mm. and not allowed to come back to the United States. Mm -hmm. Eric, do you feel at ease, do you feel comfortable that the government is following these guys, that we're doing everything we oh. can to protect the homeland? I mean, the, the border issue, I know that's not the topic for this block, but it, it certainly plays a role in all of this. Of course, that plays a role. I, I don't think, I, I think we're underestimating what's going on right here in, in the homeland. We talked about that, that terror well, let's, they don't want to call it a terror cell, but three, three jihadis come from the same town in, in Minnesota. Two of them went to high school yep. together. Mm -hmm. We have Major Nadal Hassan. You have uh, the, the Sarnia brothers. They're coming from here. They're coming from within, and they're killing us. This, this, I, I think he should be charged with treason. Better yet, send him to Gitmo and waterboard the hell out of him until he starts talking about what, what he knows. Waterboard the rest. We had a way of dealing with terrorists for a while. We decided that wasn't going to be nice enough to, to, to terrorists, so we stopped doing it. And 
look what happens. It's starting to sprout up again. We have dead Americans. We have beheaded Americans. They're not slowing down. Islamic terrorism isn't slowing down. They're not slowing down coming after Americans. They're speeding up. And the Obama administration, Valerie Jarrett goes to the Islamic Society of North America, the Islamic Society of North America, and speaks to these people. They have associated close ties to Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood. That group does. But, and so we're extending the outreach to them. When will CARE condemn not just acts of terror, when will CARE say, Hamas, Muslim Brotherhood, Hezbollah, you're wrong, you're against everything we stand for, and you should be, should be stopped, and by the way, no Sharia law should ever touch the shores of America. They won't go that far. Well, the only positive thing I saw this week, and I'm not one to defend CARE, but they did condemn the beheading the of act. the American journalists. Right. The act. This is their time to lead. I'm with you. I, I don't see a lot of these organizations, though they're starting to, I don't, I don't know how they don't condemn the act um, when it's so horrific. But, Bob, when you read the papers in New York City, and if you follow it closely, we were hit on September 11th. There have been a number of jihadi suspects arrested in New York City. The NYPD has been spying on mosques for any potential radicals. Bill de Blasio, mayor of New York City, has shut that down. Do you think we've moved away, as Eric says, from some of these very successful terror-busting procedures here? Well, we, you know, we spent trillions of dollars on Homeland Security. And I think it's paid off. I mean, from what I can tell, the, there seems to have been a number of these incidents where we've intercepted it and stopped it. There was a couple of them that were high profile, but they didn't go anywhere. Uh, the idea of, of these guys coming back in the United States, I think, is highly unlikely. Once you use a passport to get out now, the chance of getting back in the United States is virtually non-existent. But uh, this, is again, gets back to the point where you allow Muslims to come into this country uh, with student visas, the thing I got on before, where 15,000 never showed up at their schools. Uh, there are other instances of this. England and France, look at all of them. We all have created Muslim communities. And those Muslim communities have flourished, and they have built mosques, and that's their right to do that, but it's not their right to carry out the uh, the uh, terrorist sustaining terrorist organizations and apparently they're doing that. Mm -hmm. There is a PR effort, Dana, which I, I want to ask you about. There was an op-ed penned by UK's David Cameron, who's in a bit of political trouble himself, and I think he's he's also doing this to to save his own duff. Um, but he penned this um, in concert with President Obama, and they said that they vow not to be cowed by ISIS. For me, words are important, words matter, but it's really actions and what they're doing. And, and I, I am concerned that we're not taking all the, the appropriate steps, not just overseas, but back here at home. Well, we've been dancing around the political correctness of this issue, and in England, it, that really uh, hit home over the week, last week when that um, Rotherham case mm -hmm. came to light with 1,400 young girls being systemly, systematically raped, abused, prostituted um, by pedophiles that were Pakistani and Bangladeshi for the most part, and those Asian communities is what they were, are, have to refer to them as in, in the UK. So the, the, the words certainly matter. We, um, I admire the West for how we try to handle uh, assimilation. We want you, of course we're an open society, we want you to be here, we've, we, but we've bent over backwards to the point that now we are hurting ourselves. Um, on the social media standpoint, that's where the PR battle I think is the most important. What we're watching now is if Twitter existed in the seventh century, this is how human beings treated one another. Mm -hmm. um, we have all evolved, they have not. So then the PR war gets even more important because evildoers like the beheaders, they actually have phones. And some of these phones are connected to countries that have nuclear weapons. So it's, it's totally different terrain. And the other part of the, I think what Obama and Cameron could have said is that the, think of how unprecedented it is that we have now had, in the last two weeks, a British citizen killing by beheading an American citizen over a Syrian civil war. <laughs> and, and, and that is what we have to that come to terms with, that we are actually, now we have Americans and both well, British mm -hmm. and Americans actually fighting one another over a Syrian war. Mm -hmm. And the harshest words c coming out of the administration um, Joe Biden, but go ahead first before I... Yeah, I just because you brought up the... Is it Rotherdam or Rotterdam? I'm not, not quite Rotherham. sure. Rotherham. Rotherham. The 1,400 uh, uh, girls uh, raped or sexually assaulted over a long period of time. The true enemy 
to radical Islam is not other religions. It's actually women. Uh, the, their entire gig is about controlling and abusing women. Because once women gain any power in that totalitarian ideology, they, it crumbles. They have to keep women covered. Mm -hmm. They have to keep women as third, fourth class citizens. And it would be nice. It would be such a great thing and is, is to see feminists Feminists rise up, and, and in a, I would love to see an army of killer women that would, that would, that whose sole job is to ice these people because the, they're the number one threat to women worldwide, mm -hmm. and feminists have to actually take the lead, and it would be great for the military to create specific... You know, you know where that actually exists yeah. is in Israel. Yeah, yeah they have, they have the, women there. The women there. fighters but, yes, and just, are and, fierce. And make them as ruthless and as, 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 uh, almost as, de as atrocious as they are. And you know, we can be if you get us at the oh, right know. moment. <laughs> if we touch your shoes, you Andrea. You want us at the front lines. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I can tell you that for sure. Can I touch yeah, another issue um, that we're, that's kind of getting lost in the shuffle of all this? Iran. We're talking yeah. about an Iran that, that wants to be nuclear capable to do whatever the heck they're going to do. And they're as fanatic as these, as these ISIS, uh, ISIS um, Islamic uh, fundamentalists, they're just as bad. They have the, the, the whole um, structure between the, the, the religious side that wants to, they want Sharia everywhere. They, mm -hmm. they want to promote Sharia law around the world, around the globe. They want Israel off the map. I mean, we've heard them say it time and time again. To, to allow nuclear capabilities in Iran is just buying time before they become the next ISIS on a much bigger, more powerful, let's, and, let's, and more financed Let's scale. remember, though, that, that Iran and ISIS are, are opposed to each other. Yeah, and, for and, now. And, 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 I, I doubt. and remember when ISIS was against uh, Syria? Yeah. What? This is an issue I think that Republicans and Democrats could come together, exactly what Greg said. I mean, you think about their anti-women sentiment, their anti-gay sentiment. I mean, this is an opportunity for everybody to come together. But the harshest rhetoric we've heard has been from Vice President Joe Biden. Uh, take a listen to the VP yesterday. They should know we will follow them to the gates of hell until they are brought to justice. Because hell is where they will reside. Hell is where they will reside. Okay, Brett Baer has a source uh, who said this. Chase them to the gates of hell? How the blank are we going to do that when we can't even leave the front gate of our base? And Colonel Ralph Peters last night said, really, we won't even cross the border into Syria. So tough talk from the VP, but again, we go back to words versus actions. Well, we, but we said that we were going to put our, our troops in there to protect American uh, facilities, which is exactly what they're doing. That's the other exactly thing I would be a little careful of, if, if you're going to have, a, if you're going to have a, a journalistic statement, I think you might have more than just one source to do that. Are you but, questioning uh, Brett Baer's source? Not at all. I wouldn't question Brett. Uh, well, I don't know Brett Baer's source. That's the whole point. I mean, there, are there two, three, four people saying the same thing? I, as I understand it, there are a lot. It's of a well, you, you do agree that the message from Joe Biden delivered right there is vastly different from the message that President Obama has been delivering over the last Well, they're vastly different semester. politicians. There's also Joe getting ready to run for president. Well, well then fine. So then is he call it back that. that up? That's better than I, would, that. I think that yeah. the follow-up to Joe Biden is, okay, then... Forget President Obama for a moment. You, sir, what specifically then would you do? Well, what are you willing to do to chase someone to the gates of hell? Mm -hmm. what, and I'd be interested. You might have been talking, the hell out of might have been talking about D.C. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Can I, <laughs> D.C. is hell. Yeah, yes. Can I add a point? I think the real, the, one of the real enemies here is the complacency of a distracted country. We're, it, we're, and it, we're ambivalent because we're so successful. We've got, we have everything we need. So we have the ambivalence of a winner countered by the viciousness of losers. It's, it's our turn to be crazy. Well, great, we are. We have, we're the we only have ones to be doing crazy. anything. Every I know, but day, no, what I'm saying every is- Every day there are I'm, bombs going dropping on them. Nobody else is no, doing but that. You're missing my point, you're missing my point. I'm talking about as an American citizen, Becoming as insane as they are, as finally scaring the hell out of those who scare us daily. Why aren't we out in the streets waving flags and, and burning things? Why aren't we burning effigies? We don't do it because we're complacent. We did it on September 12th. Yeah. Um, that was 2001, it. but we've gotten away from that. And that's, it's really upsetting because it is true. Until more Americans die, yeah. that's when you're going to see people start to rise up. But I'm for the bombing. He just I agree. has a different ideology. That's what I think. He just, yeah. he doesn't love and want to protect the United States and have the same feelings who, that who we all do. President Obama. Just read his Cairo speech. It's all there. Ahead on the five, a look back at the